And yes, we are live. Okay. Hi, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 816. And the topic today is about forgiveness, but really the way I'm saying it is self-forgiveness is actually better for your health than kale or green drinks. I'm not explaining that more in detail because I was using that as a response to somebody else because there's a reason for that. Anyway, before I explain and, and give you some tips, not just explaining why it works, but also show you how you can do it and use it for your own health, I'll introduce myself first. I'm getting to the speed, sorry, I was on a, at a big bike ride, so I'm a little bit getting my energy back. So, um, before I jump in, hi, my name is Barry Sobe. <laughs> if you haven't seen, haven't seen a broadcast before, I do this every day. My name's Summer Ends Broadcast. It's Facebook Live, in case you're wondering, and it's on YouTube later on. I'll tell you all about the links at the back end of the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker. I'm also um, an author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. And I'm a relationship and love expert and a spiritual guide for women, particularly who want to have more love, life, and balance in their lives. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women and what inspires my work and why I do what I do. It also what started these talks over two and a half years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. The title hasn't changed yet. It keeps feeling it will, but it hasn't yet. So today we're episode number 816. So quite a few talks out there, all about love and relationships and self-support and how to be a happier person in the world. And today's topic is no exception. So the title today is Self-Forgiveness is, he- is Better for Your Health Than Kale or Green Drinks. And I'm kind of messing with the, um, I want to say the LA crowd, but certainly the people who are very adamant about how they must have the right diet and drinks but they judge the crap out of other people who don't do it. I'm sure you know people like this. Well, maybe just I, maybe I know people like this and you don't. But I, I, I know people who are like adamant about you know they, they do they do vegan, they're living vegan. They drink they do their green drinks. They do they eat kale. They do yoga and other things too. But they still have judgments against other people in a very in a very overt way. Sidebar slightly. There are people who believe they're spiritual. I'm going to go down this path. I want to wake some people up. That believe because they're spiritual, they don't need to judge. That's not really not. That's not actually avoiding judging. It's just a way of pretending you don't judge, and it's bullshit. I've been on this path a long time, and I've seen a lot of people playing that game, and I just <laughs> not willing to stand for it anymore. So, for me, forgiveness is a key, and to avoid judgment, which is not the same as forgiveness, by the way, which should say to sublimate it might be a better word sublimate judgment is not removing judgment either it's just a means of pretending you're better than which is bullshit yes i'm going to call bullshit on that one self-forgiveness and i'm using the term self-forgiveness intentionally because to be truth be told all forgiveness is self-forgiveness i'll explain that one in a moment but having self-forgiveness hi sue nice to see you in my broadcast having forgiveness is absolutely vital for your own health and freedom. A friend of mine, a friend of mine posted on her, uh, in a group I was part of on her walk, I remember now which, about what does forgiveness mean to you? And I said, for me, it's a tool and a key to open the door of the traps we put ourselves in with judgment, guilt, and resentment. And I mean that, and I'll explain that more in a moment too. But the reason why I want to talk about how why self-forgiveness and forgiveness are really the same thing is because, and this is the big thing that people don't get, when you forgive, you're not forgiving anybody else. Let's say that one again, because people are going, what? When you forgive, you're not forgiving anybody else. Because what forgiveness is for is forgiving yourself for the judgment you place against yourself or other people. I'll say that one again, because this is the pivot point. For a lot of people, they don't get this. And it's like, this is a game changer, so I want to make sure you get this. Forgiveness, which really is self-forgiveness, yes, so I'm watching, I'm going to explain it more in a moment, is the application of compassion again for yourself, for the judgments you placed, perhaps against other people, or against yourself, through guilt, resentment, or judgment. When you actually forgive yourself, it's like coming out of prison. You're releasing yourself from this self-imposed jail that you put yourself in, this prison, this, this cell you put yourself in, because you're holding resentment. Because the thing about it is, when you are judging somebody else, that's not affecting them, it's affecting you. That's called resentment, by the way. And I talked about guilt and resentment a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday even, I'm not sure. I talked about it recently. But I'll explain it again because this is what forgiveness is useful for. 
Guilt and resentment are opposite sides of the same coin in the sense that guilt is judgment placed against yourself, resentment is judgment placed against somebody else. But the key thing is, whichever way the judgments go, they start inside of you. And when you understand that, you realize that you have the access point because the thing about it is, I'll go there in a moment. The, access, the, the reality is you have access to it because inside of you, you have control and dominion over it, which is what forgiveness is useful for. If somebody else judges you, that's nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. I, I know there's, um, was it Eleanor Roosevelt's quoted as saying, what you think of me is none of my business. It's that sort of thing, but more than that, it's actually understanding that all the judgments that you have inside yourself are all self-generated. Again, either inwardly or outwardly, guilt or resentment, it's the same thing ultimately, which is you have a judgment that's wedging between you and your heart. It's a block from you loving yourself and your ability to love, period. I've talked about this in my work with clients a lot because a lot of times in relationships, judgments show up. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> judgments do show up and so do resentments and so does guilt. When you forget to get the groceries that your partner asks for and the person, your partner's upset and you start feeling guilty about it, perhaps. I uh, need to put a caveat on that in a moment. Or your partner forgets to do something, it doesn't show up on time, it forgets to text you or call you, let you know they're going to be on time, and you feel resentment towards them. There's the, the caveat I was going to put on that is that, okay, we'll say it this way. If you don't feel any guilt about doing something that goes against the agreement you have with your partner, you may be not invested or connected or emotionally invested because the thing is if you don't care about what's going on you won't feel any judgment generally speaking see the freedom of not caring about anything means you tend not to judge about stuff but it's not always the best place to play it's more fun more joyful in relationships especially to be involved to play in there to be full in interdependent not a codependent I've talked about that one many times before I'm not going to explain that one now but the thing about being in a relationship is you're not in a relationship to get filled up you're in a relationship to fill up to be filled up yourself and then to overflow into the relationship. That's a different topic, I'm not gonna go there now. But the thing is, it does come with the, um, let's say, opportunity, but it comes with the experience where things can end up being judgmental. It's part of life. I, I, don't, know, I don't know of any, I don't know of any relationships that I'm just thinking of anybody I know. No, oh, maybe one. Most people I know who are in a relationship deal with guilt and judgment and resentment a lot. Some of those people have this skill. Some of them don't. I like to help those who want to get help. So if you want to learn this one, I'll teach you how forgiveness works. And I will tell you now, I've got a couple of links I can give you for a free download. One from my site, which is the, well, actually it's two things I offer up. One of them is um, the self-forgiveness worksheet that I learned from my master's program, which I use with my clients. And the second one is actually from Colin Tipping's book, The, the um, Radical Forgiveness and Radical Self-Forgiveness, there's two books, which talk about this um, um, methodology he uses, which is a little different to come to forgiveness. But the way I explain it is this. When you have judgment against somebody else, you're putting a wall up between you and them. When you have judgment against yourself, you're putting a wall up inside to separate yourself from your heart. Those are self-imprisoning choices. Whether you put a wall up against somebody else or a wall up against yourself, it's still a wall you put up that's blocking you from something that you want to be closer to, your own heart or somebody else's heart. Forgiveness is the way to unlock the door or to take the other wall, however you want to see that visually, to release yourself from that prison. And I'm using the term prison because that's what it's like. That's why I'm talking about how it's healthier than kale and green drinks. I was joking about it, but truthfully is self-forgiveness is a means that helps you heal your heart. It helps you free yourself from imprisonment and it gives you back your energy. And frankly, it's a much more effective tool for living healthily than just taking, just eating kale and, and, I mean, and having green drinks, which frankly, don't always taste that good. So <laughs> having forgiveness may save you a bunch of effort and, and, add, add, and add years to your life because judgment I've learned and know about this is in research on this, judgments will shorten your life. And even if, it do, even if it doesn't, it'll make it feel like it does, because judgment sucks. So how self-forgiveness works is this way. And actually, this let me say this way. Forgiveness and self-forgiveness are the same thing, except that 
when you're forgiving yourself, you're talking about judgments you placed against yourself. When you're forgiving some, when you're forgiving externally, so to speak, or forgiving outwardly, you're actually forgiving yourself for judgments you placed against somebody else. So the bottom line is, the judgments placed inside of you, either at you or at somebody else. That's why forgiveness is really fixed off forgiveness all the time. And again, by doing it, you release yourself from your own prison and become able to love more. Now, one thing I'll talk about clearly, forgive, forgiving is not forgetting. Some people think, you know, you've got to forgive and turn the other cheek, kind of the biblical thing. No. Forgiveness is realizing that the judgments you place don't serve you when you release them. But it also gives you the ability to watch what's happening and then choose differently because you don't want to go down that path again. So you have foresight, you have awareness, you're not in, you're not in um, um, forgetfulness. You're clear and you can see what's happening. So, self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness is a fairly simple practice and process. However, it does require to be in the right state because to simply say, you know, I forgive myself for judging so-and-so for doing something, that sounds, that, that's the format. But if you don't have any investment emotionally, it doesn't have impact. And frankly, forgiveness works when you are in the place where you can actually apply it to your emotional state. To just do it up here in your head, it, it, it's, it's going through the motions, but it's not, doing the, it's not having the effect. So self-forgiveness is an application, basically, in a way, of applying loving to those parts inside that hurt. That's actually, I'm actually borrowing another quote, which is, um, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt, but so self-forgiveness for me. So how that happens is, when you want to forgive yourself, first of all, you've got to become aware of the judgments you placed. Again, either against yourself or somebody else. When you become aware of the judgments, and you can bring compassion to the situation, because it may be something where you're upset, angry, um, in pain, wounded, hurt feelings, that sort of stuff. That's not the place where forgiveness really works. It really works when you start bringing compassion to yourself for those upset feelings, for those hurtful experiences, and for the judgments. The more compassion you can bring, the more effective forgiveness becomes. Because forgiveness, I believe, the way I, the way I describe it, is forgiveness uses compassion as the fuel to apply itself to those wounds inside. It's like, okay, this analogy might work, let's see if it works. So forgiveness is the band-aid to put over the cut the compassion is the uh, antiseptic that goes on the Band-Aid. Something like that. That, that I think that works. That's, that's a loose analogy, but the understanding of how it works is that basically, if you have a, a wound that you're putting a, ba a dressing on, there's usually two components on the dressing. One of them is the protective dressing, and the other part is the treatment ointment type stuff you put on the dressing to apply to the wound. In a way, compassion and forgiveness work together that way to become a healing agent for the wound inside. I guess that kind of works. I just made up a new analogy. <laughs> so the way that you do forgiveness is must have compassion present. Because otherwise it's like you apply the forgiveness and it doesn't really heal the wound. It may protect it, it may cover it up, but it doesn't, doesn't heal it. Hmm, this analogy is working pretty well. So how you apply self-forgiveness is to first be in a compassionate state with yourself, to bring the loving to your wounds, to bring the loving to yourself because you really want to care about yourself more and you don't want this wound in the way, this judgment in the way. And the format that I use, and, it's in, and again, I'll give, I can give you the worksheet if you want to use it. Um, I'll give you links at the back end so you can do that. When you forgive yourself, it's a matter of applying forgiveness to the judgment you placed against yourself or somebody else. Something in the format, for example, if you... Um, I'll, I'll throw some simple ones out. If you, For example, if you judge us, if, if I judge myself, just use myself as an example, for... Um, For, for I think one of you use, I'm trying to think another one we use. Um, yes, yes, Sue, with compassion is the key, absolutely. So, forgiveness is a practice. I'm just thinking about, just come up with a couple, it's funny, I'm thinking, what judgment do I, do I want to throw out there? Um, all right, I'll throw one out with somebody, I'm going to use some, somebody else out in the world because it's going to be easier for me to use because I can go with it. It's funny, it's so much easier to judge somebody else than judge ourselves, isn't it? <laughs> Or should I say, it's much easier to become aware of judgments against somebody else than it is against herself. So let me throw one out for somebody else that I have. Um, well, I'm going to make one up because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to expose anything. So let me just say, my friend um, Joe has um, promised he would get something to me and hasn't done it, and I'm judging him because of that. 
So I'm judging Joe for being a flake, for not delivering, and it's, uh, it's really pissing me off. That's kind of the energy of the, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously mucking it up, it's not real. But that's, what I'm, that's the energy. So first of all, it comes, understa- it comes to the understanding is that I'm, I'm hurting myself by judging. This is another piece, by the way. When you judge, you hurt yourself. That's why it's not good to be judgment, judgmental, because you're wounding yourself, emotionally speaking. So judging yourself from the place of, um, I can say this, judging yourself gets in the way of you being free to love. So the first thing is to start understanding that the judgment I'm holding against myself isn't helping anybody. It keeps me separate from Joe. I don't get any peace of mind. I'm continually running through my head and it's getting in the way of me being happy. And when I get more compassionate with myself, which is kind of the path you follow, where I get to a place of just saying, you know what, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm willing to be forgiving. I'm willing to be accepting. I want to be free of this. And you focus that direction, it brings you more to compassion. When you have the compassionate energy and you have the feeling, you're feeling it in your heart, in your chest, in your beingness, then there's a time to apply forgiveness. So some, and the format I use in, in the worksheet I have from my master program is basically saying, that I forgive myself for judging Joe as being a flake. Now, it's the format in that way, because I'm saying it this way, because I'm forgiving myself for the judgment against somebody else for something they did. Whatever they did, I'm not judging. I'm judging myself. I'm, sorry, what I'm not forgiving is what they did. I'm forgiving myself for the judgment I placed against them. This is why it's not forgetting. Whatever happened, happened. And you may need to take corrective action. For example, with this situation with Joe, I apply forgiveness for myself. I forgive myself for judging Joe for being a flake. I forgive myself for judging Joe as not... not um, keeping his commitment with me, for example. After I've done the forgiveness, I will have much more peace of mind and be more centered and more loving. So when I talk to Joe next time, it's like, I won't be in a place going, Joe, you should have done this. I'm pissed off at you and everything else. Instead of doing that, you'll get to a place where you reach out to Joe and say, Joe, look, I'm going to check in because I haven't heard from you and I'm getting kind of concerned. It's a caring place to come from and there's no judgment because you've done the forgiveness work. See how that works? So do one more on the other side, which is the internal one. So, for example, we'll say, using the example of Joe again, well, I didn't do something for him, just to use that as an example. And again, when you have judgment against yourself, guilt for not doing something for somebody else, that's a human experience. If you don't carry judgment for, not, for being a flake on other people, you may need to go see, see, get, get some therapy. Because frankly, <laughs> if you don't deal with this stuff, you, if you don't have that concern, you're real flake yourself. No judgment, that's just a label. <laughs> so, internal guilt and self-judgment forgiveness is because the, the judgment is that I judge myself because I flaked out on Joe. I didn't bring, I didn't deliver what I promised, and he's going, he's up, and I don't, and I feel like I'm going to uh, incur his wrath or whatever. But I'm still judging myself for not doing it. So I'm saying, I forgive myself for judging myself as not being good enough, or I forgive myself for judging myself for not being, um, not keeping my agreements, something like that. Well, again, these are whatever's real for you at the moment. And, you do, and that's the other thing, by the way, with forgiveness. The judgments and the forgiveness are about what terms are real for you. Don't make up stuff. Find the real words. They fit you. So again, as I work through this forgiveness for myself, this is the guilt side versus the resentment side. When I forgive myself, then I can be in communication with Joe and say, you know, I'll make my apologies. I promised to deliver stuff. I didn't do it. I've been, I, I, I said I'd take care of it. Can we set up a new agreement? Again, clean, centered, not judgmental against myself, not saying against him, not trying to defend myself, saying, look, I messed up, my apologies, I want to take care of this, let's make this work out better. See, this is the thing. When you use forgiveness to take out the judgment, communication gets a lot cleaner and generally gets more caring. So I'm a big fan of forgiveness as a tool to make your life easier. I'm a big fan of using forgiveness to make your communication and your relationships easier. Forgiveness is the key unlocks the prison you put yourself in when you judge. Oh, that was good. Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the prison you put yourself in when you judge. There you go. That's how. That's what it is. So if you're fed up putting yourself in prison, start forgiving. Again, I'll put links in the comments for... Um, actually, I'll put a contact form in the comments so you can reach out and send me a message so that way you can let me know your email address in the comment in the contact form so I can send you the links to download the forgiveness worksheets. So you can have them. That's my gift. No, no fee. That's my gift. I will put a link in the comments for my self-love practice because some of you people need some practice with self-love out there because if you're judging a lot, you may need to start loving yourself as well as forgiving yourself. Doing both is good. So I'll put a link in the comments to my self-love guided meditation. It's a purchasable download, um, two audio tracks, and a deep workbook which will help you love yourself and really bring home a sense of gratitude for who you are. So that'll be in the comments too. And thirdly, if you really want to get some help, 
that goes beyond this and you want to go deeper and get some coaching, counseling, guidance, I'll put a link in the comments for, a, for the chat with me so you can talk about what can help you and, and when I set up a conversation, what I call a complimentary clarity conversation so we can talk about it. That's three things in the comments. Oh, and my books, I'd mention that. I actually do talk about forgiveness in my book, by the way. And there's a written link, which I'll give you the link anyway, in my book as well. So if you want to get my book to read about that, you can have that as well. One of the chapters is about forgiveness. Yes, one of the chapters is. The rest, there's 40 other, 49 other chapters, so it's a good book to have, my recommendation. So that'll be in the comments. There's four links in the comments. So I hope this has made some sense, and I hope this has landed for you. This is perhaps one of the biggest pieces people don't talk about in this self healing and realignment and as I said before as in the title self-forgiveness is more potent and it's better for your health than kale, than kale or green drinks and this is why so it doesn't make some sense to you if you've got any questions or thoughts or ask some, want to ask more questions put them below in the comments I'll respond when I sign off um, replays because this is my Facebook live I do every day at 5pm if you haven't seen my live before and you want to join me live uh, first of all just join me on my personal page at 5pm Pacific time right here there should be somewhere around the broadcast, um, three dots you can click on for more information and there should be a, link, a line there for, for being notified next time I go live so you can watch me live and be notified on your Facebook if you're doing that. Replays on Facebook, go to my business page which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. My personal page is Barry Selby by the way. Uh, you can like my page and you can watch them there. Also YouTube, because I do put them on YouTube because it's easy to find them there because the YouTube, are, they list more um, condensed so you can see the titles more easily. And since it's 816, including this, that's a lot of topics. So that is my, my channel on YouTube is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. Please like, my, please subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where all these live. Whew. Okay, give me something to think about. Um, worksheets, reach out to me. I'll put some links in the comments. All four links will be there and where you can find my replays. Seriously, if you've got judgments, if you're feeling guilt or resentment, learn how to forgive yourself. You deserve to be free. You deserve to have what you want. I'm passionate about that. It's my mission, my purpose, and my service, and I'm here to help. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.